In today's episode, we talk with retiree Terry Lippert, who retired and then joined the Riverside Woman's Club. She immediately began volunteering for the group and thus not only found a group of friends, but also found a way to help others through the club that is celebrating their 120th year. Find out how she's rocking her retirement and how you can too in today's episode of Rock Your Retirement. Talking with people about how to have a great retirement. This is the Rock Your Retirement Show. We don't talk about money, but we talk about almost everything else you need to rock your retirement. Now, here's your host, Kathy Klein. Welcome to Rock Your Retirement. This is the show where we help you have a great retirement. We don't talk about money, we don't talk about insurance. We talk about all the other things that you're going to need to know when you retire. Or, if you're already retired, we can help you have a better retirement. We help you rock your retirement in such areas as social and family, entertainment and travel, volunteer work and philanthropy, matters of the spirit and soul, sex. Yeah, sometimes we talk about that too, but we usually leave that to the professional therapist. Last of all, we talk about ways to help your parents or others who may need your help now or in the future. Baby boomers are in what's known as the sandwich generation, which means that not only are they helping their children, but they're also helping their parents. And we want to be able to help you manage that as well. We want you to be passionate about your retirement, and we want to help you rock your retirement. Our guest for today is Terry Lippert, who was born and raised in New York. She moved to California and enjoyed multiple careers in human resources and volunteer management. The last position before retirement was Vice President of Membership for the Girl Scouts, and she was responsible for recruiting troop leaders serving 11,000 girls. She joined the Riverside Woman Club five years ago and immediately immersed herself on the committees. She was elected to the membership chair where the club was honored by earning the first coveted shoe award and we're going to have to ask her about that later. She's currently serving as the first vice president or dean. Does that pretty much sum up your work, Terry, or tell us a little bit more about yourself. Well, I'm really excited to be part of the Riverside Women's Club because this is our 120th year. We formed in 1896, and now we have about 58, actually 62 members, and we're really, really excited because we're celebrating with different uh, events for 120th year, and our elections are coming up in April, and I hope to be the president of the Women's Club. And reaching well, good out, luck. Yes, thank you so much. And you're going to reach out to who? To the community, as we are a community-based organization, and we serve over 100 charities in the Riverside area. Well, that's pretty cool. Now, don't let me forget to find out about this shoe award. We're not going to talk about that just yet, but don't don't let me forget to get back to that because I'm very interested in what that means. So when you were first working, did you enjoy your work? Oh, I loved it because we were serving girls throughout Riverside and San Bernardino County, and we were introducing them to the Girl Scout program. And the Girl Scout program is very beneficial for girls. And they started out as daisies when they were five years old, all the way up to senior Girl Scouts. And they really enjoyed themselves earning badges and going out on field trips. And yes, selling those wonderful Girl Scout cookies. Yum. I love those. Yes, but it's not very it's... good for my diet. <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> but people can't resist them. <laughs> they are so delicious. They are just wonderful. So yes, that's what the Girl Scouts are known for is selling the Girl Scout cookies. So tell me about when you when you first retired, was it was it something that you planned for or was it unexpected? Did it come, how how did that happen? Well, it really was unexpected. I had planned to work uh one more year and then retire, but 
things were getting really difficult and the people that were in charge were uh, challenging to work for and my responsibilities almost tripled and I was wow. working 14 hour days and pretty exhausting. So uh, financially I could retire a year earlier. So I decided when I was still young enough to be able to travel and do the things I wanted to do, I said, why not? So I did retire earlier than I expected. And how has that been going? So you retired earlier so that you could travel and do things, and have you been doing that? Oh, yes, yes. We have, my partner and I have a time share, and um, we really travel mostly throughout the United States and really enjoying ourselves. And we do a one annual big trip a year and then three smaller trips. Our timeshare is all over. They own um, over 300 properties. We can really go wherever we want to go. It's not like the old-fashioned timeshare where you own a week somewhere and you can only go to that one place. This timeshare, you can go all over. So we have really, really enjoyed ourselves the fact that now we have the time and we can go when we want to go is really wonderful. That's great. What was your favorite trip so far? New Orleans. Was and why, was, that be, was that before or after the hurricane? Oh, that was way after Katrina. <laughs> yes. <way> after Katrina. <laughs> well, I haven't been to New Orleans since the, since Katrina. So I, I haven't seen the rebuild. You know, the last time I was in New Orleans was a very, very long time ago. So what was it like? Well, this was about a year ago that we went to Katrina. And uh, we didn't go to the Ninth Ward. I understand that's still needing a lot of repair. But uh, we went to the French Quarter and we went to the above ground cemeteries and we heard the most magnificent jazz music you ever want to hear. And the food, oh my God, the food is just fabulous, just absolutely fabulous. I would go back again in a New York minute. <laughs> <laughs> and you know about that because you're from New York. Because <laughs> I'm from New York, so absolutely. <laughs> So where are you planning on traveling next? Well, we have a cruise plan in September. We are going to New York for five days earlier because the cruise uh, leaves from New York and we're going to go to uh, the, the uh, New England area and Canada for the fall uh, foliage. And so that could be really wonderful. I didn't realize they had cru- had cruises for that. Is that a, a regular ship or is that a, a one of those... Uh, what do you call it, river boats? No, this is a river boat. This is a regular cruise. Wow. And we love cruises. We've gone on about seven different cruises. It's just, it's for me, it, it's a wonderful way to travel. So as often as I can go on a cruise, I, I do. So uh, yeah, that's in September. They're very inexpensive yeah, so I have to these fit days. that in with all the women's club stuff. So. <laughs> Maybe you should have a so, women's club yeah, Traveling cruise. is my number one favorite thing to do. <laughs> do you always go on the same cruise line or do you take different cruise lines? Yes, uh, but I would like to go on that riverboat cruise. That's on my bucket list. That's definitely, you know, maybe in a couple of years. I think our timeshare does have some connection with the Viking uh, riverboat cruise. Nice. So um, that's something that I want to do. Well, have fun on your cruise and let us know how that fall foil, foliage. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna have to check that out because I didn't realize that that type of cruise existed. So Terry, I'm actually interested in going on that cruise myself. I've never heard of the fall foliage cruise. So what cruise line is it? If you don't mind, if you don't mind telling us, it's a Norwegian cruise line. Well, we're gonna have to check that out. Thank you very much. Appreciate you're, it. You're welcome. So obviously, you're currently rocking your retirement. So tell us a little bit about that. Oh, I, I just love my retirement. I, I'm trying to strike a balance, though, in between all of my work with the, the Riverside Women's Club because I could really immerse myself in that 100% as much as I love it and I, I love what kind of work we do. I really need to balance that out between my relationship and my family and my hobbies. So 
I really try in my schedule to mark things off that I am not available for committees and for events because the club, we're a national organization. So there's things at the club level and the district level and the state level and the national level. So, I mean, you can really keep yourself busy 24-7. So <laughs> I love doing art projects and I have uh, my friend who's a professional artist and she comes about twice a month and she gives me art lessons and I do scrapbooking and there are so many other things that I like to get involved with and this way if I have an open calendar I can allow for things to come in and then there's my spiritual work and my reading I belong to a book club through the women's club and the gardening club There is so much to do. I'm busier than when I was working. I truly am. I I just keep going and going and going like the Energizer Bunny. And then I say to myself, well, wait a minute. I, I need a day for me. So it's really, I don't know when I was working how I was able to do the things that I wanted to do because there was just no time. So I just love what I do. You know, uh, tomorrow we have a tea that we're going to, and because Sunday I have a publicity committee meeting. (laughs) But (laughs) in between all of that, and then my sister Barbara and I are very close, so we try to get together a couple of times a month. And I play Mahjong, which I love the game, and that's twice a week. So it's, uh, it's a busy life, but it's a wonderful life. I truly believe to stay young, you got to keep your mind going, your brain cells going. And of course, there's walking, the walking club. I feel great. I feel healthy and I I feel alive. And I think when I was working, you know, there was the stresses that you have. Because every, every organization is, there's some politics involved. Although there's politics with the women's club too, but it's different. <laughs> you know? Well, when whenever you get a group of women together, <laughs> there's always going to be politics. <laughs> oh, I know, I know, and I I try to stay above the fray. Sometimes I accomplish that, and other times, you know, I find myself doing conflict resolution. For the most part, these women are just terrific women, and and they're there because they want to serve the community. But you also make friends. You you make a lot of lifelong friends at the club, and and that's really great, and it's important for your life, too. It's also nice that the club isn't your entire focus, that you're doing other things. I mean, so many people could make the club their entire lives, but you're doing all these other things that you talked about. You're gardening, you've got a book club, you're... You're reading, you're doing art. The the women's club isn't your entire life. You you have other things outside of that. So that's good. Yeah, I think it's healthier because some of these women do make it their whole life. And, and that's where the problems come in, I think. And um, right. and there's nothing I could do about it, but I, I see it. That's why, oh, we even have ladies who lunch. I introduced that because... <laughs> um, I saw that, you know, people don't always get to know each other. You know, they go to these business meetings that we have, and they just sit with the people at their table, and then they go home. So I said, well, you know, I I create all these different opportunities for these women to get to know each other. So I did ladies who lunch, and then I do ladies who do dinner, because we have a lot of young women now joining our club. When I first joined, there were women in their 80s and 90s. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, (laughs) (laughs) we're We're not going to have a club very long. (laughs) <laughs> That's right. We have to reach a younger population here. So I reached out to younger people. The only downside to that, I can't get people to help me on committees because they're working. But it's good. It's good for the health of the club. So now I do ladies who do dinner. So it will uh, accommodate, you know, people who work. And that's taken off really well. I just come up with all these ideas, sometimes too many, because then I need to be there. (laughs) Right, exactly. And, and, And also, one of the really great things that you're doing that I haven't heard any other of my retirees doing yet is that you're blocking out your calendar. So that's an executive trick. You know, yes. you're blocking out your calendar and you're saying, look, I'm I'm only available on these days because on these other days, 
I'm doing these things, and I and I actually do that on my calendar, but I'm still working. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh. Well, I I learned that I learned that years ago. You know, time management. Um, I don't know how many time management classes I've taken over the years. Somebody will say to me, I, I want to have a committee meeting. So I say, I have to go to every single committee meeting. And I say, okay, but this is when I'm available. I do do, I do block it out because otherwise, you know, I find myself, I'm going to committee meetings every single day of the week. And that doesn't work for me. <laughs> I can't right, do that. Right, because you have a, a life outside of the club. What's the name of the club? You said it was national. Well, our club is Riverside Women's Club, but the organization is for the state is California Federation of Women's Clubs, CFWC, and national is General Federation of Women's Club, GFWC. And for the state, there are 260 women's clubs. Every place where you could live in the in California, there's a women's club. Every place where you live in, in, in the United States, there's a women's club. So let's say someone is new to a community and they want to meet women. Find out where your women's club is because there is a club. There is a that's women's great. club. So that that's one great way where I... you meet people. Yeah, you know, very... I, yeah, I lived in Temecula for 17 years. I moved from California, from uh, New York to L.A. I didn't know of anything about a women's club. And then I moved from L.A. to Temecula, I lived there for 17 years, and there was a women's club. Didn't know anything about it. And you can join a, a club wherever you live. And you can live in Temecula and join the club in Riverside if you wanted to. That is great advice, and I can completely understand why. So what you're doing now is you're telling our women listeners about something that they can do, and they don't have to wait until they're retired to join. They could actually oh, join no. now. And you don't have to get as involved as me because I'm a type A personality. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I'll join and I'll join everything, but... When you work, you can get as involved or not as involved as you want. You can just go to, you know, a our, our business meeting at night, and if that's all you can do, that's fine. I mean, there's no pressure. Or, you know, if they have a book club on ours, is Saturday morning. So you, you go to the book club if you like to read. It's just some way, because, you know, what I didn't do when I, re- when I worked, I had no hobbies. I really didn't have a lot of outside interest. So when I retired, it took me a good year to find myself, to really say, well, what do I want now? Second half of my life, what am I going to do? So it was hard. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why we have this show. Our listeners were really targeted at baby boomers who are either, you know, retiring within the next five years or they're already retired. And so giving them that information. A lot of people retire without knowing what they're going to do because if you Google retirement, what what pops up? What pops up is 10 million sites on money, right? Right. There's nothing on what are you going to do? And that's why we created this show because that's what this show is about is what are you going to do? <laughs> you know, right. It's not all about money. It is yeah. not all about money. So Right. We're so glad that that you're here to tell people about some of the things that they can do that that have nothing to do with money. Yeah, I I think that's really important because um, of how I struggle, and I got really depressed, you know. And I and I said, I said, why am I depressed? You know, I have all this time, and 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 you know, I had the money, but I I didn't have. Because I had such structure. When you work, you have such structure. Now I didn't have any structure. I didn't have a time that I had to get up in the morning. I didn't have time that I, I came back, you know, from work. And, oh, my God, it was terrible. I mean, it really, really was. And how I found the Riverside Women's Club was on volunteermatch.com. And that's another good place to find volunteer opportunities. Let me just repeat that. Volunteermatch.com is a place that you can get online and all of these companies or organizations write a profile on there and what they're looking for. And they, they write about their company or organization and they post a volunteer opportunities. Riverside Women's Club posted an opportunity to volunteer. That's how I found them out was through volunteermatch.com. How did you find out about Volunteer Match? 
Oh, I, I just, you know, I love to get on the internet and do research. And I was just, I plugged in some keywords and I connected with some organizations because I had all of these skills. I had managed volunteers before, I was in membership, and I looked up different places where I could volunteer. I, I looked in the newspapers that had volunteer opportunities and nothing really resonated with me. So I I just put in keywords. You know, I looked at the city website, and finally, I don't quite remember how I got to volunteer match, but I did, and, and it took a while. And it was fabulous. They had they had so much on there. Um, I don't remember uh, a lot of nonprofit posts on there, and some didn't interest me at all. But that did. That's a very good resource for people. They're looking for volunteer opportunities. The city, I, I just looked on the city uh, website today because I was looking for something totally different, not having nothing to do with volunteers, and they're looking for volunteers. There's a lot out there. Well, that's good because we do have male listeners as well. They're looking for ways to volunteer. Then they can go to volunteermatch.com or they can go on their city's website right. and find a way to get active and involved because – like you said, sitting around with nothing to do for a year, that can be depressing. Yeah, it was. And I, and I didn't think I was creative. I found out through a friend that she introduced me to my friend who is an artist, and she was giving art lessons. I said, oh, God, no, I'm not an artist. That's, there's no way. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I can't draw a straight line. And she was giving collage classes, not drawing classes. I've been with her now well, five years, and now I'm doing altered books. I mean, it just it just keeps growing and growing and growing. And um, I entered one of my pieces in an art contest, and I won second prize. You did? I mean, yeah. That's I mean, this is fantastic. from somebody who, you know, so... You know, you, you just have to explore and, and just find things scrapbooking. I taught myself how to do scrapbooking. That was something I didn't think I could ever do. And then I decided to take lessons. So, you know, take lessons, just just find things. Find you things know. to do because that's find. how you stay healthy. Right. Are there other ways that you stay healthy? Walking. Walking. Eating well. Found out that um, I have to stay away from gluten and, you know, so I have a, a better diet and I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. And our club has called WOW, Women Out Walking. A lot of our charities, diabetes, uh, they have a walk. Make-A-Wish has a walk. A half a dozen charities that we work with have fundraisers, and their fundraisers are walk. And a lot of them are for free, you know, for people to walk, especially uh, walking with the animals, which is coming up. And they're usually easy walks, you know, 1.3 miles or even less than that. And they give you a T-shirt and pancake breakfast and, and you just walk. And it's just exhilarating. You know, we do it as a group. So uh, that's a very healthy thing to do. I go to a gym. So that's how you stay healthy. What is this walking with the animals? Are you out there walking with deer and chimpanzees and no, you no, know, you antelope? Can take, if you have a dog, you can take <laughs> it's dogs mostly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's funny. It sounds like fun. Yeah, it, it is fun. Like fun. Okay. Well, we are coming up to the end of our show, and so I just want to ask you, I always ask two questions at the end of the show. What do you wish you would have known before you retired? Well, I, I, I wish I would have known to have some kind of a plan rather than kind of stumble around for a year. But, you know, I have heard that from a lot of people that have retired that it does take them a year. After all, you were I worked 42 years before I retired. So I don't know what I was expecting, like, you know, day two after you retire, I would be out there and knowing exactly what I wanted to do. I, I think I had high expectations. Maybe you need to just lower your expectations and give it time, considering in relationship to how long you were working and your retirement is for the rest of your life. So you want to make sure that it's something that you really want to do. If while you're working, you could start thinking about if you know when you're going to retire. Start exploring things. 
that you might be interested in. And and maybe you can work it into your work life. You know, if you think you want to take up golf, maybe you can start doing it on the weekend so that when you do retire, you have something that you can go right into. Instead of going 2,000 hours to zero, like right. hitting a brick wall. Exactly. Well, that's great advice. Second question is, we do have a lot of listeners who are either new retirees or maybe they feel stuck in their lives at the moment. If you were sitting across from the table from one of these new retirees, what's the one piece of advice that you would give them to have a successful retirement? Well, first of all, just give yourself some slack. Just don't be hard on yourself, number one. Just start making a list of things that you like to do. See if that translates into a hobby or something that you would like to pursue. Every city has stuff for seniors to do. Parks and Rec has a list of free classes and in, in different hobbies from jewelry making to scrapbooking. Senior centers now are not for old people. You know, a lot of people have this misconception that they're 80 and 90 years old. They're not because, you know, more and more people are working longer and then they're retiring and so a lot of senior centers plan trips, and they have a lot of activities. So get into action. Whenever I start feeling down, which is not that much, but as soon as I get into action, even if it's making a phone call or getting on the Internet, I feel like I'm doing an activity and I get out of the doldrums. Even if it's making a list of gratitude, you know, what you're grateful for, just do something positive for yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself because when you're newly retired, it's going to take some time. And sometimes it does take up to a year until you really get into the groove. Check out a women's club or get on volunteer match or go to your senior center and see what classes. I went there and I they had scrapbooking classes. And um, now I am thinking of going into jewelry making because I love jewelry. So it would be nice to make my own jewelry. I mean, they're just... There's just so many things out there. So your advice is to get out. Get out get and out. do something. Do something. <laughs> you just walk around the block. You, know, you, you have to get into motion, whatever kind of motion it is. Just do something. Well, that is great advice. Thank you so much for coming on our show. Would you like to give the contact information of your women's club before oh, we say goodbye? I would love to. So again, it's Riverside Women's Club and the website is one word, all to, all thrown together. And women is A-N, not E-N. So it's RiversideWomensClub.org. Riverside Women's Club, so singular, dot org. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Terry, for coming on our show. We really appreciate it. And this has been a wonderful time. And for everybody else, we're looking forward to seeing you again on Rock Your Retirement. Thanks for listening to the Rock Your Retirement show. If you are rocking your retirement or know someone who would make a great guest on our show, please send us an email at podcast at rockyourretirement.com. If you want to be able to walk your dog, go to the gym, do the dishes, or anything else while listening to the show, you can subscribe on the iTunes podcast app or on your Android app, such as Podcast Addict. It makes it so much easier to take the program with you. You can even listen in your car. My name is Barbara Lippert, and I'm here to help make your retirement more enjoyable. After using our bonds, pure, safe, and beneficial products with awesome results, I became a consultant. My goal is to help others have a healthy retirement. Check out my website, barbaralippert.arbon.com. Then email me at babsbiz at sbcglobal.net or call me at 858-775-7765. Use the word healthy to get 20 to 40% off. If you can't afford prevention, you'll never afford disease.